I'm Mitch Marks uh, with HBK, and today I'm going to be talking about flux measurement, flux calculations, and flux mapping. For those of you who don't make know HBK, we make a pretty great power analyzer and motor analyzer. Um, so the agenda for today is, is we're going to give a little background on flux. Um, we're going to go through implementing flux equations, uh, flux measurement, why HBK is particularly good at it, and then a case study. Um, so uh, I assume most of you probably know quite a bit about flux, maybe maybe more so than I do. Uh, but for those of you who have been tasked with, with measuring flux and probably haven't heard that word since university, um, this is just a quick review. So flux is a magnetic field through a surface. So magnetic field is that, that kind of force that sticks a magnet to your refrigerator. Um, and we can think of the field as having these field lines, which are indicated by these like pink arrows. Um, and if we think that these pink arrows or this magnetic field um, have, a, have a strength um, or a density to them, and they're going through a surface indicated by my, my yellow rhombus here, um, that's basically our calculations for flux. So flux is the magnetic field um, times the area uh, of interest times the cosine of the angle. So we, we want that uh, field line is normal to the surface. Um, now we're not going to use this equation at all today, naturally, but I think it's good context for like we've got some magnetic field, we have an area of interest, and that is our flux. Um, now, as we'll find in the next couple of slides, flux can be calculated a lot of different ways. Uh, there's a lot of variables, a lot of units, um, but I think for those of us who are trying to figure out maybe how do we measure this flux, or what kind of idea do we have for measuring flux, I always try to come back to the unit of volt seconds. If you can get to volt seconds, it should be okay. Uh, a little abstract, uh, volts times time, um, but, but this is our unit of, of flux. Now flux and motors, we're here to talk about motors. Um, and again, it's, it's just a measurement of magnetic strength um, and it could be a couple of different places. So it's a magnet, measure of magnetic strength in the stator windings. Um, and, and this flux is caused by a current running through a coil and that's creating a flux. And if we look at my little motor example on the right, uh, we can see that we've got these purple lines that would be one winding interacting with, with maybe a rotor magnet. And that's kind of our flux path. Um, the same could be said for this red path where we have this coil of wire causing this flux field that's interacting with a magnet. Flux can also be seen in rotor magnets. Uh, we're not gonna focus on that as much today um, or rotor windings, and, and the rotor winding flux is, is going to be almost identical to everything we speak about in the, in the stator flux. All right, so I promised a lot of math, um, and, and I put this picture on the right-hand side out of an old textbook of mine just to shock and awe. Um, what we'll find is that when we calculate flux, there's a million different ways to do it, and there are a lot of variables involved, and if we kind of come through, I mean, we see inductances, uh, we see a whole host of different variables. We have the flux of each phase, all these angles, and just disregard all of this. If you, if you want to know what this book is and you wanna go through the 50 pages deriving some simple flux equations, please reach out to me. I would be happy to share um, um, that book. Now, at the most simple, our flux of any of A, B, or C phases is equal to the integration of voltage, stator voltage minus stator resistance times stator current. And what that basically is, is the integration of voltage minus losses. And if we think of the integration of voltage to get to flux, we get that volts times seconds, that volt seconds. Now we could use this, um, but, but not a whole lot of pe people find individual phase fluxes super useful. The reason for that being is we have these distributed in space around a, a, a stator. Um, and we're kind of creating that, that magnetic field rotationally and where is the peak? What is the angle? There's a lot of unknowns here. Um, so we most commonly see people looking at the DQ axis or the direct and quadrature axis for their flux. And if we kind of go to our base equations, um, you know, what, what this book spent 50 pages deriving, we more or less get to our D axis flux equals inductance times the rate of change of um, Q axis current minus the Q axis voltage plus um, the Q axis losses. And these look really similar, don't they? Um, it's all the same physics. Uh, divided by 
um, the electrical speed and the q-axis has all the same variables. So what we'll find in, in the tactical implementation is, is we have voltages, we have currents, we have resistances, we have speeds, we have things we can measure. Flux is a measurable quantity. Uh, so this is exciting, this is exciting, we're getting somewhere. Um, now in the previous section, I mentioned there's a lot of ways to calculate flux. If we look at all these equations, we look at all these variables, we can sub things in and out. We can look at these expressions differently. And, and maybe we wanna look at flux in terms of power. Well, that's perfectly reasonable. We have our speed, we have our pole pairs, uh, we have our fluxes and our currents, and, and we can get mechanical power. And we can rearrange these expressions to maybe get different calculations. So I present this to one, make it so that, yeah, these aren't that intimidating. There's not that much going on. Um, and also to present the point that everyone has their own method of calculating and estimating flux. If you look at 10 motor controllers, you get 10 different flux estimations. Um, and you may have different variables available depending on your setup, um, but there's, there's a lot of different ways to skin this cat. And I'm gonna present some simple examples, um, but you can make it as advanced or as simple as you please. Um, and, and you've got assumptions, but for those of you on the test side, just always remember, um, if somebody asks you something and you have a clever idea, just check your units. And if you get back to volt seconds, you're, you're probably all right. Okay, how do we implement this? How do we implement all this math, all these things I just talked about? Well, okay, um, it's not too bad. <laughs> so previously, um, you know, we, we looked at this equation and I rearranged that flux equation to actually be in terms of, of LD and LQ. Um, Derivatives are hard to do in the measurement world. Inductances are hard to measure. But if IQ isn't changing and ID are not changing, so for operating at a steady state, these guys zero out. And now we're cooking with gas. Because if we zero out those difficult terms, I have voltages, I have currents, I have resistances, I have speed, and I have my flux, what I want to calculate for. So we can measure voltage, we can measure current, we can estimate resistance, we can be fancy and use a temperature or, or we can just give it a static number. Um, if we wanna be really cool, we can possibly use mechanical power and assume rotor losses and then we don't even have to use resistance measurements. Um, and to get to VD, VQ, ID, IQ, we need to measure angle. So we can do our transforms. But these are actually all pretty simple measurements. Nothing, nothing scary yet. Um, but if we make the assumption that we're operating in steady state, we can rearrange our equations and we get lambda or, or flux in the d-axis as VQ minus the Q-axis losses over electrical speed. And we can get uh, flux Q as negative uh, VD minus the d-axis losses over um, speed. And, and this is becoming pretty simple. This is pretty palatable. This can be implemented. So all we needed to do was measure voltage current, do our DQ zero transformation, which I have demonstrated on the uh, on the screenshot here. Um, and, and for that, we're using our angle. And then we, we get a pretty simple expression. So this is cool. This is very exciting. We just need to make some measurements we were already doing for our efficiency mapping. Like if you're measuring efficiency, you are already measuring all of this. That's awesome. Okay. So why is HPK particularly good at doing this flux measurement? Well, we, we make it really simple to collect electric and mechanical signals. So we're measuring voltages up to 1500 volts, we're measuring currents, um, we're measuring temperatures if you so like, we can measure CAN bus, um, and we can also measure things like mechanical power, electrical power, angle, um, speed, angle. And we can bring these all into one location um, but it's not just that we bring them into one location. We can execute custom real-time equations on these. And when I say real-time, I mean true discrete time. Each one of our measurement cards has a digital signal processor on board where we can take this wide variety of measurements and execute equations in discrete time. You can view that as a scope trace. You can feed it back to an automation system. And what this allows you to do is implement your own equations like all that weird stuff that your mathematicians might have come up with. You can implement that, execute it in the real time, 
And now you no longer need to take a scope measurement, do a bunch of math on it, and then rinse and repeat. While you're doing your efficiency map, you can do this flux map as well. While you're doing your control work, you can take your flux measurements as well. In addition to that, we store all the data that goes into our equations um, so that if you're troubleshooting or if you want to do more advanced analysis, you see an anomaly and you want to you know, take it back into the, to the mad scientist workshop or you want to correlate to models, we can store all the data that goes into those equations as well. So you have this really accurate measurement and this real time measurement. So you're saving kind of this, this post-process time, but if you need to, you have the data stored. And then this goes out to both the engineers on, on the line and to, um, to the test people. We have local support and training. If you're an engineer who's, who's doing all this control work and you don't necessarily want to know the in-depth uh, world of your, your power analyzer and your measurement equipment, we can help you get your equations implemented and, and get you up and running quickly. If you're a test guy and you don't necessarily understand all the fluxes and motor control work, um, we can help train you up on some of that stuff too, um, so that you can have a better grasp of the application and again, do your job better. So we take a lot of pride in our, our training and support. Uh, we have training and support in pretty much all regions globally. All right, motor flux examples. So um, I have an example here where we had a machine uh, operating at a fixed torque. So I got my torque in pink and we ramp speed. So we go from zero speed up to a fixed speed and then back down to zero. Um, we're measuring three phase voltages in blue, three phase currents in red, and then angle um, is actually kind of cooked into our speed, but we're measuring angle as well. So we have our torque, our speed, our voltages and our currents. These are kind of our direct measurements. Um, then we're taking those currents and we're executing our DQ zero equations on them. So we're calculating ID and IQ. Uh, we're calculating speed. We use this cool thing called cycle detect where we can track speed very dynamically. We're taking our voltages and our angle and we're doing the calculation um, for VD, VQ. So we're calculating that, that D axis voltage and that Q axis voltage. We're estimating our rotor resistance. So we're making a really simple resistance estimation here. Uh, just saying, all right, this is pretty much a fixed temperature test. This is our resistance, bang, bang, boom. Um, we've already executed our DQ zero. We implement our really simple flux equations. Again, I kept it simple, but if, if you can cook up anything crazy with a, a host of different variables, please be our guest. And we can view all of those as a scope trace. So we got our torque and speed as a scope trace. We see our voltages and currents. And then we have our Q axis, Currents, and we can see that well, torque's pretty constant. Q axis and D axis current are pretty constant. Our speed is changing, so our D and Q axis voltages are changing in amplitude. And then our D and Q axis fluxes are are displayed out just like a scope trace. And then the beauty of this is, is that if you throw a trigger, you know, you hit a point you're happy with, you throw a trigger, we can live populate that flux map. We can fill in your Excel sheet. And you can plot these flux maps live. You can plot them in the same place you plot your efficiency maps. And you're really doing two tests in one with one instrument. No need to go to a scope, take scope measurement, come to MATLAB, plot a point. You can simply take your efficiency map, take your flux map, do your control work all in one central location. So we're really trying to, to take the place of both a power analyzer and a, and a scope. And we have the accuracy and, and measurement capability to back that, which is really cool. And you can start doing things like live flux mapping and accelerating your development. Um, so I hope you found this interesting. Um, in review, you know, flux is kind of an ab abstract topic and there are a lot of different ways to calculate it. But fortunately, these flux calculations really all come back to voltages, currents, angles, um, and then some sort of losses, which are all things you can do and measure in an electromechanical system. So very cool. Um, HBK can help you do live, that's real time live flux mapping because we can bring in these electric and mechanical signals. We can execute a wide variety of real time equations and then plot those points to an Excel sheet and to a map in the real time. Um, for any questions, 
please feel free to pull out your phone and scan this QR code. Um, and if you want to reach out to me directly, uh, I'm available on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Mitch Marks, and I look forward to speaking with, uh, with hopefully many of you. So cheers.